My name is Tammy Benson, and uh, I grew up and live in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. Our son, Adam, was diagnosed with having a profound bilateral hearing loss in September of 1996 at the age of 26 months. We were strongly discouraged from using sign language with our son. It was a system that refused to provide any services to him or our family unless he could be first made to hear. The preschool teacher at the Lawson Heights Preschool, where they had a program for deaf and hard of hearing children, told me that very first day I met her that my son would never have language sophistication equal to her or I. The consultant for the public school board said my son would never have any friends if he didn't learn how to speak. His audiologist said that he would be the only child in all of Saskatchewan that used sign language. The ear, nose, and throat specialist uh, suggested that I would subject our son to life in a deaf ghetto if we didn't pursue his oral skills. And the director of special education for the province informed me that my then three-year-old son would likely be diagnosed with a learning disability once he entered the formal education system. And the consultant from the Saskatoon Public School Board said that only a very small percentage of profoundly deaf children learn to read beyond a grade two or three level. So I was expected to entrust these people with the care of my, and treatment and education of my son, but that was inherently wrong. My name is Adam. My sign name is this, the A on the, sh on the chest. I was born deaf, grew up uh, in a silent world, couldn't hear anything. My whole world is visual. The reaction to finding out he was deaf was not that, I mean, lots of emotions probably, but not that big of a deal. It was just, okay, well, we just got to adapt. It was a really frightening time trying to adapt to having this deaf child. I remember that our house became very quiet because I didn't know what to do with my deaf son. To realize that he had never heard any of the stories we read or any of the times that we told him we loved him was a little devastating, but you know, you kind of lean on the professionals to steer you in the right direction and, and get you the services you need. And as it turns out, that just wasn't the case. I want to emphasize, and I can't emphasize enough, that ASL is a complete language. It's not gesturing, not a partial language. It's like any adult like myself, I can discuss any topic with sign. Just like the English speaking people can t discuss any topic. Were we ever given any advice to learn sign language? Um, I would ha have to say not specifically by uh, the professionals that we come in contact with in Saskatoon. There was baby and me signing classes for parents who wanted to take their hearing babies to a signing class so they could communicate before they could talk. But we were advised not to attend those because signing would be detrimental to our child's well-being. And we were told that the deaf community will steal your baby from you. That's not true at all. They introduced us to our baby. And he's a wonderful person. We went to the ear, nose, and throat specialist here in Saskatoon, and he referred us to a program called SPARK. Adam was fitted with hearing aids in October of 1996, 
And it was a very short time before the audiologist determined that he was gaining no benefit from those hearing aids and she started to counsel us about getting what they called a cochlear implant. So we were kind of, you know, I'm going to use the word forced into the cochlear implant program because there was nothing else. It wasn't until after Adam had the cochlear implant surgery in July of 1997 that we received any services. So for a period of eight months, when Adam was at a very vulnerable age, and we were really struggling to try and figure out how to raise this deaf child, for eight months, we were left, Adam was left, without any direct services from the programs available at that time here in Saskatchewan. I remember staying with my family and that I required a device I still didn't understand why, what it was for. As well, there was a, a lot of headaches, feeling tired. And my parents explained that I was uh, very scared. I, you know, take off and want to go home. Every time my parents brought the device, I would just run away. Um, and that I don't remember. Uh, maybe that's just, you know, that's something that, that my memory has blocked out. The cochlear implant did not work for our son. It works for some kids. It did not work for our son. And it was ridiculous to put all your chips into that, that it was going to be good and not have any options. Now, I had had the luxury of traveling to British Columbia and taking part in an outreach program for deaf and hard of hearing children. And there I really um, got some astonishing information that in every other province except for Saskatchewan, there were options available to families with deaf children. I was born and raised in Prince George, BC. I was born deaf, so I've been deaf all my life. And for whatever reason, we were very, very lucky. The audiologist said, well, she's too deaf. Maybe you should be encouraged to sign. And that's not normal compared to other audiologists. So by the time I was one, I was already signing. I have started signing. I was communicating with my parents. My dad learned sign. My grandparents, family, everybody learned sign because that was accessible to me. And I was absolutely astonished with the sophistication of the language of these three and four year olds. You know, I watched a conversation between two about the power of magnets and the different power of, of magnets that were available. They joked, they giggled, they, they talked about play dates that were going to be coming up or activities that were coming up a week from now. This is a very sophisticated but age appropriate language for children that Adam wasn't exhibiting, nor did I see that in the preschool program here in Saskatoon. So I wanted sign language to be part of his program. And uh, when we made that request, it was promptly denied. The school system here with the, the philosophy was to focus all of their efforts on having the child learn how to listen and learn how to speak. They told me that if Adam didn't progress with learning uh, oral skills, listening, speaking, by the age of seven, by the age of seven, then they would introduce some sign language into his educational program. And I'm like, that's not okay. Yeah, um, I mean, the oral and auditory, I mean, it depends on the individual. Sometimes it works great. And that's why I believe that we need to provide what's best for them and see where to go from there. You know, pick somebody. We talk to everybody. Their expectation of Adam was zero if he learned how to sign. It was incredibly disheartening 
to look up to these people who were voted into or given the position of caring for the residents of Saskatchewan, that they would deny him any services and, and say, oh, he'll never get a job if he learns how to sign. Oh, don't you want him to be able to order his own French fries? That was one of the stupidest fucking things I ever heard. And these are the kind of things they prey on your, your, your upbringing of being a hearing person that this deaf person has no value unless they learn how to talk. Chris, I had my older son, he was hearing. And I said, like, Sean, do you know why mom and dad are so busy with all of these things about Adam? And he didn't really know. And I said, well, it's because um, the school that he's supposed to go to won't provide him with sign language or a sign language interpreter. And he looked at me with the brilliance of a five-year-old and said, well, maybe, Mom, you went to the wrong classroom. And I said, no, hun, we were in the right classroom. And then he said, but, Mom, don't they realize Adam can't hear? And that was, that was the crux of it, is Adam couldn't hear. He needed language. We hired a, a deaf lady to come to our house and interact with our family so that we could learn how to sign. And I'll never, <laughs> I'll never forget the first day that she was here. She's a wonderful lady. And she taught Adam the sign red. And I got home from work and he grabbed me and ran around the house and pointed at everything that was red so he could talk to his dad. And it was so fucking ridiculous to be dealing with these idiots in health and education and tell us that that was wrong. It's ridiculous. <clears throat> Adam wasn't the only child with a hearing loss. And so in part for him, but mostly to correct what I believed was just a terrible wrong in the approach to deaf children in this province, I filed human rights complaints uh, against the Department of Education, against the Saskatoon Board of Education, against the Department of Health, and against the Saskatoon Regional Health Authority. Some children will be able to identify everyday sounds such as car, car horns, doorbells, and birds singing. It wasn't really what I had in mind for Adam's communication and language skills. Oh, the deaf community often, you know, refers to us of having done some good, having made some positive changes. I, I, I don't know that to be true at all. Um, if it weren't for the deaf community, you know, maybe we wouldn't even be living here because it'd have been easy to go somewhere else where we didn't have to fight every day for 10 years. Well, my parents, oh, they were really good at hiding that situation from me growing up. I honestly had no idea. I didn't know that my parents were fighting for that. I knew my mom worked for SDHHS and I just thought, oh yeah, that's, that's just what she does. That's her job. And then just before I became a teenager, uh, most deaf adults were like, oh wow, we're so impressed with your parents and, and what they're doing. And I'm like, what are they talking about? I wasn't after anything. I didn't want a bunch of money. I didn't want anything, but I wanted things to change because it was wrong. Because Adam was being denied access to health. He was being denied access to an education based on his disability. And how could he learn if he was focusing, if the focus was on the only part of him that didn't work? 30 or 40 different states in every province in the country 
sent us letters of support and said, you're doing the right thing, this is what your child needs. And I was naive to believe that the Human Rights Commission would get right behind us and, and agree with that. I couldn't get the investigators to understand that it was those programs that were embraced by the institutions, that oral, oral stuff that rejected my son's need to use sign language as an integral component of his development and growth. That those programs rejected my son's right to self-determination. They rejected my son's right to communicate freely. They rejected the reality of my son's hearing loss and they rejected any association with the culture and the language of the deaf community. They did the investigation. They sided with um, education and health, right? And we appealed and, um, and, uh, and, we, and we failed. We, so, <laughs> While I was reading mom and dad's documents, I noticed again and again and again, they would say um, for audiologists, oh, oh, he's young. I know he's deaf, but let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Let's wait. And I'm thinking to myself, wait for what? What are we waiting for? We need to develop that. Three, the ages three to five are very, very vital. So what, what are we waiting for? You know, like, so, I don't know, I have no comment to that, but then, but then that would have led me to fail for sure because of them. They defended the, the practices and the programs of the Department of Health by stating that the only rational and legitimate, legitimate objective of health with regard to deaf children is the restoration of hearing thereby concluding that the Department of Health need only address the physical problem of not being able to hear. So both Spark and the cochlear implant program address that functional problem. And Adam was able to access these programs. This is what the Human Rights Commission is saying, that Adam was able to access, access these programs and be a recipient of those services, which he was, and then they say the fact that Adam could not benefit from these programs is acknowledged and viewed as unfortunate. You know, a chance meeting one day through my job met the special needs coordinator for the Catholic school board, told her the story about us driving back and forth to BC trying to get an education for our son. And uh, she said, I'll set it up. Don't know how, but we'll make it happen. She said to give her a call, right? So I was hesitant to do that because I had made many phone calls and been, um, not helped, but I phoned her and I told her who I was and she said yes, that they could put together a preschool placement for Adam and uh, and and I said, and, and will you provide a sign language interpreter? Like I was just, like I was afraid to ask because I was afraid of what she would say and she said, I'll never forget, she said, We'll provide an interpreter in whatever language your son is most comfortable communicating in. I just about fell out. Wow. Wow. And that was the first time that I felt any professional in this whole city or province respected him for who he was and was willing to do what needed for him to be successful. Wow. <laughs> so
So growing up, I just felt that life was normal. I just had a normal life growing up. We've been told Adam was the first child in Saskatchewan to ever receive an ASL interpreter in a school setting. Um, I'll, I'll take that if that's true. It was wonderful, it was wonderful. Not always perfect, but it was as good as it was gonna get in Saskatchewan. So we just, you know, it worked, right? It's only recently that I've come to have a better understanding of how awful high school was for him and school. And I feel really bad for that. And I applaud him all the more for getting through that time in his life. In elementary school, it was a wonderful, great experience. Transitioning to high school, I lost a lot of interest. The biggest thing that I noticed was that I was left out a lot. Was not like elementary school. Why? You're only in a class with one hour. For one hour, you have different classes, different teachers, different students. You're running around. So it, it was very hard for me to feel included and, and to be equal like everyone else. High school is very clicky, and I'm the only one that had, you know, ASL or was deaf, so there was no click or group for that. There, there was a little bit of sadness in Adam's graduation when they paraded through the, when the graduating students paraded through the gym, and Adam was walking alone. And that made me very sad to be reminded that, you know, he was alone. I'm happy to report that Adam is a very successful and delightful young man. Since he was old enough to work, he, he has. He's a contributing member of society. He worked in the family business and went on to another province and was very successful working out there for five or seven years and then came back home. Uh, he gave up a fairly high paying job to try and work within the deaf community and raise awareness and, and be a role model. And uh, he always went to deaf camps as a, as a young person and went back and contributed his time to be a role model for other young deaf kids. And we're very proud of both of our boys. When I was volunteering for camp, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm almost 30. And I'm looking at these kids and they might be age, you know, eight to 15 or so. And I realized that they aren't the same as mine. Their, their language is delayed, their English skills are delayed. And that's not what I experienced growing up. But for our community and their community, I have to try and encourage them and hope that they will be able to get a better life for themselves. I believed, because I had to, <laughs> that going through that human rights process had got the attention and that things would change and things would get better and, and better than what they were for us. About 15 years after our dismissal of our human rights complaint. We were invited to participate in a human rights tribunal. And I sat there and I listened with horror and absolute heartache. <laughs> because parents and the advocates of deaf children and students, as they went around the room and they told their stories, nothing had changed. Parents were still being funneled into that same cattle shoot, into that oral, oral programming, discouraging the use of sign language. And the consequences of that reality were devastating to these families. Deaf children were still being denied access to sign language at an early age or actually at any age and they were still being denied access to equitable services from Saskatchewan Health and Saskatchewan Education. 15 years later, there's parents 
in Saskatchewan that are being denied the same services. And it's not because they're not available, because they are. It's because the people with the power to disseminate the information choose not to. To my knowledge, no one, no one has ever been held accountable for this inhumane treatment of some of our province's most vulnerable children. And I was destroyed yet again. Because after all of this, I feel like I failed. Education and language accessibility is very important. Doesn't matter what, how old they are, doesn't matter if they're deaf, hard of hearing, doesn't matter what their language skills are at, and it's important to find out what they prefer instead of just putting cochlear implants on everybody. You know, just my, like my case, I had a cochlear implant and it didn't work and still they said, let's wait and see. So what would my life have looked like in the end? Would I be reliant on my parents, reliant on social assistance? I've heard of stories of a, a little boy who was three or four, just kicking and screaming, couldn't communicate with his mom. The mom was struggling, trying to figure out what he wanted. He was crying. Later at the end, they were discussing because all he wanted was a drink of water. That's it. This whole struggle just to figure out that all he wanted was a glass of water. If he learned sign right away, he could have said, oh, I want water. And I brought him this water. So when people say that we made such a difference, I don't see that. I see that. I see the kids. For the Saskatchewan deaf community, I wish that they had like a deaf center, uh, open a deaf school, have the kids come back, that's where we'll have the numbers expand, have services. Deafness is a really low incident disability. I get that. But deafness is the essence of my son's very being. Adam's acquisition of sign language made him the successful adult he is today. It didn't deprive him of anything. It helped him. And Adam is just an amazing guy. He's just not like any other man I have ever met, you know, like egotistical or whatever, like not that. He's just amazing. And so, yeah, we've been together since. We bought a home and we'll see what happens next. He is, um, he is a very compassionate, kind young man and uh, he's done well for himself. He's got a delightful sense of humor and he's very patient. And to steal the words from another mom who wrote a book, uh, Adam has, has successfully raised hearing parents. <laughs>